cooking porridge for a family of eight. It is the start to a long day for Mina Zulu. At age 60, Zulu is the only adult left to run the family farm in southwestern Swaziland. Like so many in sub-Saharan Africa, Zulu has lost several family members to AIDS. Now, in addition to working the land, she must raise her six grandchildren and care for her 95-year-old husband. Swaziland has one of the highest rates of HIV infection in the world. But now, farmers like Zulu are facing two other difficulties that are challenging farmers across the globe. Climate-related problems, in this case repeated drought, and soaring food and fuel prices. If there's no assistance that they have, I can assure you, it's going to be a grim uh, situation for the country. You know, with the AIDS situation, the unemployment, the poverty levels, all these things added together with the prices, an especially severe drought in 2006 led to a poor harvest the following year. It left up to 410,000 people in need of humanitarian assistance. For many small farmers, it became impossible to pay for seeds, fertilizer and other supplies or inputs. The UN Food and Agriculture Organization set up a series of input trade fairs where farmers used free vouchers to choose seeds and other supplies from local vendors. The spirit now is that uh, after a terrible year, last year, it is better. So they're going to eat this year, uh, perhaps not for the whole year, but uh, a lot better than last year. The fairs were organized as part of a $1.5 million funding package from the European Commission's Humanitarian Aid Department, or ECHO. Zulu says thanks to the trade fair, her maize harvest increased by about seven times over the previous year. It is this mandate that we really are interested in as ECHO, just to oversee and to ensure that each farmer, wherever, wherever they are, they, they manage to, to grow for their own subsistence. The input trade fairs help farmers, but also vendors, introducing them to new customers and markets. In a world where most agriculture depends on small farming, experts say countries like Swaziland still need to make significant long-term investments and train farmers to conserve soil and water. I think uh, uh, conservation agriculture is one of the ways we've been looking at to assist farmers to adapt to climate change. I think it's important to understand that we, it is no longer possible to continue producing crops using the same methods and technologies that we've used for the last 50 years. A better harvest could mean a better future for Mina Zulu's grandchildren. For now, she's relieved to know that her family is not going hungry.